steps of my king. Hey, hello everyone. We've got a special program for you today on Regaining Lost Ground. This is Pastor Shane Eidelman with Westside Christian Fellowship here in Southern California. I know a lot of you follow the ministry. I think we're on 80 different stations now uh, throughout the United States. And I had an interesting thing happen this week. I want to share with you. I wrote an article and I wish I could add a little bit more to the title, but I had to keep it somewhat short. And I want to encourage you, you can find it at shaneidleman.com. And it's such an important topic, very relevant for our nation that I wanted to go national and um, give you an idea of what's going on in our nation and also um, how I believe we can fix it and make a difference. Once a friend of mine, Pastor Ronnie Floyd, uh, many of you probably know him or recognize that name. He's a friend of mine. He spoke at our church recently. He encouraged me to actually put this on the radio. And I chewed on that for about three or four days. And it just keeps coming back to me that it's so important right now um, for our nation to to really be united. And so the title of the article I released, released on shaneidleman.com, again, you can find it there. You can share it with others. I also did a podcast where I'm reading it um, on my YouTube channel, Rumble channel at Shane Eidelman. You can find it all there if you want to share this with friends and family. And the title is An Open Letter to Trump, You Can Help Heal Our Nation. An Open Letter to Trump, You Can Help Heal Our Nation. Now, before you tune me out, I want to encourage you to tune this in because it's very important. I could have easily said an open letter to Americans and to Trump, you can help heal our, our nation. And I want to I want to make sure you listen to this entire uh, segment before jumping to conclusions, before turning the radio off. Um, conclusions either way on on either side of the aisle, because whether it's key evangelical leaders turning on Trump, or the media's outright hatred for him, or the other side, the other extreme thinking that Trump is their savior, the divide is deep. And the damage is damning, and it's not getting um, much better. You know, with DeSantis possibly going to run, or uh, Pence, or you know, there's I could list six or seven others. Um, I think it's important to talk about this. And for all of you who think that politics isn't important, why don't you talk to believers in North Korea? Actually, you probably won't get to. Um, how about how about Iran, Iraq, Syria, um, China, uh, where Canada is going, the UK? Uh, yeah, it it matters. And the word politics just means governing or leading a group of people. And if you don't think God's word has something, anything to say about that, I, I would probably challenge you to read God's word. You probably haven't, and that's why our nation is getting woke. That's where why doxing is becoming popular, pulling stuff out from what you did 25 years ago as a 12 year old and using that to, um, you know, knock you down. We're seeing that happen in a lot of the political races, uh, gaslighting, where they're f- throwing fuel on things. We just saw that here. I believe it was Colorado where they had that um, that shooting at the gay nightclub, and we denounce violence. I denounce violence in any way, shape, or form. We love our um, LGBTQ community as people. But as you know, I speak against the agenda. I speak against um, sin, and I tell people what God's word says. And I j- actually just gave a message, um, mentioned the twelve uh, Republican senators in it, and passive pastors who are capitulating. And the title of that message: "The Respect for Marriage, God's Way." I just released it. I don't know if it's going to stay on YouTube, so you can find it on on Rumble. Respect for marriage, God's way. And I spoke the truth in love and told people um, the truth about, hey, here, isn't that true love? Doesn't true love tell you the truth? My goodness. I mean, this doxing and this wokeness and shadow banning and all these terms, what they're basically doing is trying to prevent you from sharing the truth. Always remember this. Truth will invite scrutiny. Truth will invite scrutiny. So whether it's about you know, the current um, vaccine uh, conversation, you know, why not, why not see both sides? Let's, let's see what the truth is. Let's, let's science, actually real science question science, but nope, they want to silence the truth. They want to silence opposing voices. Same thing with these agendas. And, and I mean, are we really having a discussion where people are okay with um, 
transgender story hour at our schools uh, right here in my area. I'm sure you saw it in the news. It's a satanic club. I think it's elementary school um, that is they're promoting a satanic club. And I reached out to the superintendent and she said, you know, we really can't discriminate, Shane. Well, yeah, actually you can, when you're in positions of leadership, you're supposed to filter what is good for kids and what is not good for kids. I'm sure you wouldn't have an anti LGBTQ group start. Oh no, of course not. I'm sure you wouldn't have a Nazi, you know, third Reich group start. Oh no, of course not. Why? Because you're protecting kids from that stuff. So same thing with the satanic group, anything else that's, that's going to be detrimental to children, you can take a stand. The problem is we've become woke. We don't want to offend people. And have you ever stopped to consider that you're offending God? So that's where this article kind of went. Um, again, you can, I'm hoping maybe, maybe I'll post this radio, um, message here that you're hearing. Maybe I'll post it on YouTube and rumble as well. It might be good because there's a lot more that I'm talking to you about that I'm talking about in the article, the article to read, it would only take probably, you know, 10 minutes where this is probably going to be, you know, full 25 minutes or so. So that's what I meant by damage. The, the divide is deep and damage. The damage is damning. And that's what's happening. Our nation, just a total collapse. Kingdoms are colliding. So back to the article. One side asks the question, how in the world can you vote for Trump based on his character? Now, you know, not a bad question. That question probably could deserve some fleshing out. Uh, And anytime I want to flesh it out, uh, people don't want to hear it. So, but it's a question that cannot obviously go um, unanswered. But the other side responds that the spiritual direction of the country is the most important matter facing us. So that's where you have it right now. <clears throat> you have one side, hey, this man, look at his divisiveness or his chastising, his tweets, his innuendos, his putting people down. We we cannot have that. And then the other side says, yeah, that's that would be nice to have great character, but what is, what where is the nation going spiritually? What are we leaving for our kids and our grandchildren? That's the more important matter facing us is what many would say. And what they mean by that, I believe is look at, um, who Trump appointed, uh, with Mike Pompeo, Ben Carson, uh, looked off into family research council and Tony Perkins, uh, the head of, head, head of education, uh, was a solid Christian woman. And now we've got, you know, transgender over our health department guys. I mean, this is a no brainer. And who was surrounding, you know, former President Trump? Um, you know, people that spoke in his life. I'm sure Ronnie Floyd, uh, Jack Graham, uh, James Robinson, you know, Jim Garlow, uh, Jack Hibbs. You know, I, I know all these individuals. I've I, I talked to them and text, and and they encouraged me. And um, you know, there was a lot of great things going on behind the scenes. Bible studies, what was being appointed, the Johnson Amendment. Uh, you've got Russia and China would not pull a lot of what they're pulling with a certain leader in, in that position. Uh, you've got uh, everything from the border. Uh, I just went to a memorial of a young man from our church who OD'd on fentanyl that came across from the border. We've got people being hooked on these things. And, you know, the government is supposed to, I think this is where people get confused. They put Christ's teaching Uh, On Christians, you know, his teaching that he gave to Christians, turn the other cheek, love your enemy, give them, you know, a cloak. And they they put that on the government. They all see, look what the Bible says. No, actually, you're actually very wrong. The government, Romans 13, is to be a tear to those who do evil. The whole point of government is to protect the innocent from the guilty, to bear the sword against, to to raise the sword against those who are trying to harm the community. So the government can, biblically speaking, secure the, the borders of the country that they are protecting. The government can intervene, uh, militarily. The government can, uh, do things that are for the, the improvement of the people. Now we seem to have it the opposite under this current administration. My goodness. So anyway, that's what the debate is about. Um, and so the, the, you know, the right side, I guess would say, I don't want to hear about someone's character when the other side thinks it's okay to kill a child, even at nine months. Well, to shade of that, 
And then I talked about a flawed protector. Some have even used the following analogy to better illustrate their position. Now, don't worry. I'm, keep listening. I'm going somewhere with this, but I have to set it up. So here's their analogy about Trump. The head of a neighborhood watch program previously had an affair years ago, but he watched over the neighborhood diligently each night. He often stood against others on the committee who wanted to enact policies harmful to the neighborhood. And additionally, he was occasionally gruff and impulsive and his words were not seasoned with grace and sometimes offensive, but he did an incredible job in the late night watches and securing the neighborhood. And so here's our dilemma, folks. Would you still want that type of person leading your neighborhood watch program or leading your country? You know, some say yes, others say absolutely not. So I do have to interject this. It's not in the article, but it's so important. You know, I've, I'm, I'm in the forefront often of these a lot of these political debates and been on Fox News a few times about other issues, talk to people on both sides, love people on both sides. But the bottom line is if former President Trump would, uh, would become a Democrat and embrace their platform all of this hatred, all of this vitriol, all of this, he shouldn't be a present look at his character. All of that would end overnight. Let's be honest. So what, what's really at play here? Uh, the policies, folks, policies. You don't think leadership matters? Well, why don't you do an inventory of five of the nine Supreme Court justices? And this is also a good reminder to the Supreme Court, you are not the law of the land. God's word, God is the law of the land. You are simply an interpreter of the Constitution. You're not a law-making body. And so you cannot say, hey, you know what? Marriage can now be between a couple of men and their, their girlfriend. It can be between two women. It can be between you know your dog, your cat, and maybe you and another. And that, that's, that's going against God's word. His word is crystal clear that marriage is between a man and a woman. I think senators need to say, hey, you know what? And by the way, while I'm on that tangent, let me see how much time I got here. I got to keep an eye on this. Um, it looks like with the defense of marriage, they call it the, um, the Respect for Marriage Act. And the, Repub the Republican senators, others, you know, in that wording, they put um, same-sex marriages, but they also put interracial marriage. Just look how look how sneaky and deceptive that is. It, that there's there's no laws against interracial marriage. I mean, that's we encourage that. With that that has nothing to do with skin color. Has nothing to do with sexual preference and deviance and breaking down the structure of marriage. Come on, folks. And so, because they don't want to be viewed as against, um, you know, racial marriages. Ah, you know, I better I better just you know allow it. The Supreme Court allowed it, and they go along with it instead of being that voice of truth. Say, listen, I'm not against inter interracial marriages. I'm not I'm not um, a racist. Let's take a lie detector test. I'll pay for it. It's three hundred dollars. You know, let's I, that has nothing to do with it. But I will stand up for the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman. I will stand up for what God's word say says. I will stand up for what has been throughout church history for 2,000 years, throughout all of human history, the definition of marriage, I will stand up for that. And you might not be on the right side of history, but you'll be on the right side of God. And that is really what matters, borrowing a quote there, I think, from my friend Jim Garlow. Um, and so let me um, let me get to the point here. I better keep reading because I don't know how much, uh, if we can get through this. Um, so the bottom line is this. The key to unity and healing our nation, you guys ready for this? It's found in a beautiful word. I'm going to go quickly here. And it's a powerful word. Be warned though, this word is not popular, but it is powerful. It's frowned upon in corporate America, but is highly, highly esteemed in the courts of God. This word can restore marriages, rebuild broken homes, and lead people to redemption. It's the cure for the convicted and the way for the lost. And that word is humility, humility, humility. Healing and hope will only come through humility. Humility put God puts God on our side. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, James 4, 6. And so could it be that God is resisting America because of pride? Uh, hello, absolutely. That's exactly what's happening. And so, you know, I'm hopeful, but I'm not naive. How about you? I, I, I'm hoping you're hopeful, but you're not naive. Now, granted, I'm not naive enough to believe that, um, you know, Donald Trump could win over Hollywood. He could win over um, 
what the mass mass media, you know, he could win over all of his distractors. You know, I don't I don't think that's possible um, because there is a clear spiritual battle taking place in our nation as kingdoms are colliding. But it is possible to bring healing to millions of Americans and their families. Leadership. Here's the key. Leadership can lead us in the right direction if humility, that's the key, if humility is leading the leader. So let me let me just throw this out there. Stop and simply look at the fruit that is being produced by pride. Okay, let's do that for a minute. Stop and look at the fruit that is being produced from pride in our nation. Why? Because fruit reveals what seeds were planted. Look at Matthew 7, 16. By their fruits, you will know them. And so the stench of our fruit has reached the nostrils of God. And that's what we're, we're basically reaping the whirlwind right now. We, we understand that God is not pleased with the direction of our country. We understand that we have drifted and we need leadership to step up and humble themselves before God. So what I'm talking about here, and just in case you're curious, don't worry, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. Keep listening. Meek, 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 not weak leadership. We need meek leadership, not weak leadership. Let me explain. We need leaders who lead by example, the biblical example. Humility is life altering. It changes a nation from the inside out. Now think about this. Imagine if millions of Americans confessed that they have been demeaning and bombastic and they want to fix that. Think about that. I mean, I don't want to call some names out here, but there's some major ministries I follow on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I mean, they are demeaning and arrogant and bombastic. And, you know, let me slam the left. And then the left slams the right. And, oh, I got him better. He got me better. And, you know, it's just, it's sad to watch. You know, so millions of Americans, many of you listening, you need to confess that you've been demeaning and bombastic and angry and went on angry tirades. Uh, You know why? Because I've had to confess that. You know, it's a hard balance for me to find that, to be that, you know, angry prophetic voice and that loving pastor. (laughs) You know, it's, it's, I'll die trying, but we can't, we can be, see, here's the thing. We can be angry, righteous indignation with going on with our kids. We can be bold. We can be somewhat in your face, but we have to clothe it with humility. We have to season our words with grace. And that's really where we tilt the scale uh, is in the direction of humility. And so humility is not weakness. Did you know that? Humility is not weakness. It's meekness. It's strength under control. That's the difference. So people, think, oh, humble, you know, humbles, you know, might not work in corporate America. And I would even suggest it would work in corporate America because in corporate America, pride is considered an asset and humility is considered a weakness. But in God's kingdom, humility is the asset and pride is the liability. And here's the key. When you're humble, even in corporate America, even in business, even in finances, even in politics, you've got God on your side. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He will honor your humility. Now, again, that doesn't mean weakness. A lot of people think humility is to just, you know, be the pavement and let the steamroller run over me. No, humility is saying, you know what? Here comes a steamroller. I'm going to hop out of the way. Or here comes a steamroller. I'm going to get a huge piece of heavy equipment and block it. You know, it's, it's, it's humble. It's strength under control. You know, for example, um, the Hennessy Venom F5 sports car. It's an awesome vehicle. It's meek when it's idling in the driveway. Very meek. You know, I mean, that sounds, that, look at the purr of that engine. But when the driver hits the gas out on the open uh, road, it hits 1,800 horsepower. Think about that. It's just idling, but you know that power is under the hood. That is strength under control. It's awesome and it's awe-inspiring. So now imagine this, okay? Check this out. When the leader of the most powerful country in the world humbles himself, that too is awesome and awe-inspiring because it tilts the favor of God back in their direction, back in the right direction. Now, it will be hard because you've got to, you know, humble yourself. Hey, I could have did things better. You know, I shouldn't have been that, um, that way to Pelosi or Pence 
or William Barr. You know, I I, I got to own that. I, I can do better. Boy, oh boy, you watch the fire and favor of God fall upon your life and the life of others. Uh, and, and that might not happen uh, with Trump, but it can happen in the lives of many of you listening. I know I've been there. You can be angry. You know, you go on, you post your Instagram, you you show your, you know, your, um, your hunting rifle and they'll never come for this. You show your shield nine millimeter and, and you know, they'll never come for this. And you're angry and, and rightly so, you know, second amendment is important. Um, but the problem is our gun safes are full, but our prayer closets are empty. Did you catch that? Our gun safes are full, but our prayer closets are empty. And that is where the problem really is. So think about this. What about if Trump said this and many Americans over the years, I've learned a great deal at times, my passion for change, uh, I've crossed the line. I've become angry and the deception of an America has motivated me to tweet things that are degrading. I've called people names that I wish I could take back. Now going forward, going forward, my commitment to you is to do what I'm called to do and to be a leader of this nation. I'm not a perfect man, but I am a committed man, a man committed to our safety and security and freedom. I will seek to build up rather than tear down, but I will in no way capitulate to the system that's hell bent on destroying us from the inside out. Pray that I can balance grace and truth no matter where I serve. So imagine if millions of Americans say, me too, me too. Words like this are not signs of weakness. It takes a great deal of strength and inner fortitude to humble yourself. God will exalt you if you humble yourself. So here's the healing balm. Here's what we need. And as I wrote before, you've probably read it or you've heard me say it. Our only hope is in a national awakening that is birthed deep in the prayer closet, deep in the prayer closet. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Psalm 34, 4. We must ask heaven to come to our rescue. This is why I'm putting this on radio. We must ask heaven to come to our rescue. And that begins with humility. Angry tirades will get us nowhere, but bended knees will. America, what's it going to take to break you? What's it going to take? Could it be that God is using much of this to humble us? We must completely turn ourselves over to God today. He is the shepherd of the shattered. He is the rebuilder of the broken. He is the defender of the damaged. You'll be amazed at what God does with the healing balm of humility. So that's my commentary today on the direction of our nation. I hope you enjoyed this episode of of Regaining Lost Ground. And again, you can find more at shaneidleman.com. I think we will post what you just heard on my YouTube channel and on my Rumble channel, and on on the different feeds there, and possibly on Podbeam, iTunes, because it's so important to get this message out, to let people know, hey, I struggle, you know, with pride too. I struggle with, um, you know, trusting God. I I struggle with anger, and Lord, help me point that in the right direction. Help me, um, you know, serve you, and, and Lord, how do I have that boldness but God, how do I have tremendous grace? Lord, how do I how do I speak against our culture, but at the same time love our culture? And God, help me find that balance. And let me tell you this, the key, I'm going to tell you the key. Many people, we hear from you every single day. You love the ministry, you love the sermons, but Shane Eidelman is a coward without the Spirit of God. I am nothing without God's Spirit. We need more men and women and kids, young adults, filled with the Spirit of God, fully surrender their lives, being filled with the Spirit, turning from sin, obeying God's Word, and then out of that will come the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, contentment, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, boldness, self-control. We need more men and women filled with the Spirit. You know, without that, uh, you're just going to go on angry tirades and you're going to fall flat on your face because God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble.